Hey all, welcome to my channel. Um, if you haven't heard the news by now, it's like pretty big now. It's like Silicon Valley Bank. The big bank that's basically what we call the bank of startups, specifically in the San Francisco area and all that stuff. Um, quick rundown um, to basically give you, or not give you, but more of a case where let's give you a, I want to say, let's give you a, quick quick summary or yeah pretty much a quick summary of why it's pretty much going belly up and why the FDIC had to jump in at this point uh, and why it's a big thing for you know why it's a big thing for it going belly up practically so if you were the bank of startups uh, like if you were the bank of crypto which was why crypto is also being affected it turned out that you made a huge concentrated bet on interest rates um your customers were flush with cash you know basically so basically um they had so much cash because you know why they gave you all that cash and then they didn't have they didn't need loans at that point i, mean, I don't remember where my camera is but anyways they didn't need loans um so you invested all that cash you know in this case silicon valley bank uh they invested all that cash and longer dated fixed income securities now, as interest rates went up, those securities lost value. But here's the kicker. When those rates went up, your customers pretty much all got smoked as well, too, because it turned out they were the creatures of the low interest rates. And in a high interest rate environment, they didn't have the money anymore. So basically, what happens there? Uh, they withdrew. They were withdrawing their deposits. So what does you, as the Silicon Valley Bank, have to do? You have to start selling your securities at a loss just to cover and pay them back for their withdrawals. Now you've lost all the money, and you look financially shaky. So customers, all the rest of the customers, are getting spooked, and just like what it was in um, the Great Depression, but also if you remember Wonderful Life with the like, savings and loans, everyone's rushing to that bank and trying to withdraw everything they can and you have no choice but to sell more of your securities so you look take more and more losses. So it's a question of like, it's a, it's a, a constant cycle at that point to the point of like now they're, they're pretty much going bankrupt. Now why is this a big thing for the... Uh, startup world well because the startup world were based on the VCs and because the VC fundings are dried up also Silicon Valley Bank and there were some of them were leveraged against Silicon Valley Bank as well as some of the crypto as well too which some of the crypto environments were leveraged against that bank and because they're going this is a bank that was worth almost like close to like 80 billion dollars at one point their valuation was at almost worth literally 80 billion dollars and because there were 80 billion dollars it was a pretty big thing uh, and the fact is is they're worth pretty much, I don't know, $1 billion right now or much less than that. It, it's a matter of the fact that, you know, like, it's almost a re repetitive move of the Enron case, Enron situation. It was overvaluated, high highly evaluated. They were manipulating some aspects. But, and also at the same time, a mix of the Enron as well as AIG type of thing, basically. where Or, or the banks themselves in 2008, the financial market crisis. Where, you know, manipulation and such... But also at the same time, leveraging against certain rates, which when the rates went up, they went down. And the thing is, they didn't hedge up against it. Uh, why they didn't do that? Well, partly you could blame it on one person and one person on, or one person's administration, one person's administration alone, which is Donald Trump. Granted, when the rates went down, it was great. The economy was doing great, but as rates are down, everything goes crazy. But because it was everything was going crazy, the market had the the market had pretty much corrected itself. And everyone's going to play, oh, well, it's Biden's fault. This is only going up because the rates went up. Biden doesn't control the Treasury. Remind you, he doesn't control the Treasury, but he's trying to bring the infl inflation. He's trying to bring inflation back down. That was the big thing. Inflation went way up there as a result. And why was inflation up? Thanks to Donald Trump. You're going to say, well, how is it Donald Trump's fault when inflation was like mediocre? At that? Yeah, it was, but to a point until COVID happened, which as, as, as when COVID happened, Everything started going up at that point. Everything, you know, like everyone had was flush with cash. 
at that point, honestly, because, you know, at that time, a lot of the e-commerce uh, sites, e-commerce companies, as well as delivery companies were pretty much over hiring people and, you know, overpaying as well, too. And so because of that, they were basically, you know, essentially getting flush with cash and that you had those low interest rates. So people were buying houses left and right. And, you know, they're able to do whatever they could do at that point. And then as interest rates went up, some of these people that have, you know, flush for cash don't have, aren't flush with cash. And also the fact is, is like, you know, it's kind of a case also with the, uh, the, 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 what's it called? The, the tech layoffs. Now it's, 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 it's somewhat correlated, but yet not correlated at the same time. Because the, the tech layoffs happened because of why, again, back to the front of, you know, COVID basically, because they overhired. It was to a point like even some were saying that Google and Meta basically were overhiring to the point where like they just didn't want that these people going to the competitors. So in other words, if you had a mediocre person working off of let's say at Netflix was gonna go join Meta, Google's like, oh whoa, 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 we want to get this guy instead. He's a mediocre guy, it's like, let's bring him so he doesn't join Meta. You overpay him as much as you can. And it turns out he sucks. So now you, you know, get rid of him. I mean, that's partly true in that situation. Uh, usually it, it's more the unfortunate part is the people that were really good at their jobs that were getting I don't want to say overpaid but they were they were really good at their jobs they're also in the crossfires their collateral damage at that point as well too because of this uh, because of this overhiring and again Facebook or meta same as Twitter etc basically when they were they basically they were hiring mediocre people and overpaying because they didn't want to lose them to the competitors or they didn't want them working at the competitors for that matter. It's like we can take the analogy of sports basically, where you have a pitcher that uh, actually, you know what? This is even better. This is a better aspect more than anything else. It comes back to the Giants. What I said, Daniel Jones, hundred sixty million dollars for four years. Is he worth forty film forty million dollars a year for a guy that just threw seventeen touchdowns? No, there's a lot of upside potential to it, but in reality, probably not going to work out. In reality. And so the thing is, the Giants overpaid for him. Now the thing is, is like the Giants could have let him gone for gone to free agency. But the thing is, they were afraid that other teams would pick him up, and I, I, you know, for whatever it is, and you know, they might have that aspect of like, you know, what he might do some really, really, really good, and they might look like fools. So they said, you know what, we might as well overpay him and keep him at that point. And that was, a, and that's the same thing with you know, in the tech world, basically, especially with engineers, developers. Salespeople, operations, etc. Basically, so from that you have all those, you know, you have the tech layoffs. But then again, of course, you have what we call sort of the perfect storm for Silicon Valley Bank. <coughs> Sorry, I was coughing like crazy. I had to pause a little bit there. But anyways, to the Silicon Valley Bank, it was a perfect storm. Um, you know, you they were lever, you know, they pretty much were leveraging against the interest rates. And, you know, they were the backers of a lot of these tech companies. And now some tech companies were all like saying, so, well, wait, hold on. And, they, you know, a lot of these tech companies were for their what they were leveraging using against themselves was high debt, basically, you know, like debt financing, <clears throat> which is a lot of the case nowadays. Uh, honestly, if you do debt financing, it kind of plays a big factor into like what your company is. And some of these companies that were doing debt, uh, debt financing were going against other banks. Some of those banks were working through Silicon Valley Bank or leverage against them. As high interest rates rose, as a result, I said in the beginning, a lot of these companies were like, you know, a lot of these banks and other companies that were utilizing uh, SVB were pretty much leveraged out as well too. And they had no choice but to withdraw from SVB. And SVB having no money had no choice but to, you know, essentially cover their law, you know, cover those, cover those withdrawals um, or calls basically. And like they had no choice but to like, sell those securities that they had at a loss. Um, if there was patience involved, it might have been right. But the thing is, like, SVB needed to raise some money, serious capital, and they're not going to raise it because VC funding is dried up because the fact is, is, like, a lot of those VCs were using against them as well, too. So it's kind of hard to say, like, what's going to happen there. I mean, it was, like, almost a circular loop in that aspect as well, too. But honestly, it's a little disturbing that this could happen. And like, this is the almost the second largest collapse in the financial industry or bank, second biggest bank collapse in the, in, uh, in the U.S. history. Uh, what, the first one, of course, being WAMU. Now, see how WAMU you know, had a huge collapse. I actually made some serious cash as a result of WAMU's you know, collapse with, uh, you know, because that 
the market of that uh, uh, of those securities were propping up and down basically. This is a time where I think it might be the same case as well too with Silicon Valley Bank. The stock might fluctuate a lot here and there to the point where like you know it might just jump right up immediately as well too. That's something to sorry to look at uh, come Monday or Tuesday for that matter. But honestly, we'll see what happens. But like I said, it's a interesting. It's an interesting set of times. Hopefully, it's not a repeat of two thousand eight. Hopefully, it's not a repeat of nineteen thirties, um, i.e., the Great Depression. Uh, and hopefully, everything goes according. Hopefully, everything is good, and the economy recovers. I think Biden, fully aware of what was happening in two thousand eight, might be the right president for this because he might be able to bring it, bring him out, bring the country back out of this recession, like Obama did, uh, because they two were those two were the architects. Of the 2008 to 2016, uh, it seems like for whatever reason, every time we go into a recession, it's a result of a Democrat. I mean, a Republican, a uh, bad Republican, because of loose uh, regulations that are applied that they in- in enacted at that point. But, anyways, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, g- g- leave me your f- leave me your comments on this. I could be wrong. I could have misinterpreted some stuff. This is my interpretation. Uh, I haven't done it as much research. I'll be honest. I haven't done as much research. Uh, it's just more of the stuff I'm hearing on the news, reading on the news. I should be thoroughly researching this, you know what? But honestly, this is just my take and stuff on the some of the stuff that I've been seeing and reading, basically, and such. And like, I'm hoping I dumbed it down for people to understand parts of it as well, too. Um, for those that are not fully capable of understanding what's going on entirely. Um, but again, if you know, leave your comments uh, in the comment section, thoughts, questions for that matter. I will, I do res- receive my comments, I do read them all, and I do respond to them to the best of my abilities. Uh, and also, if you do like my talks and, and my channel, uh, please subscribe. Um, you know, it, and then with that, I'll leave it at that unfiltered, unedited, and unrehearsed. Until next time.